Good morning again everyone. I am back in Surrey with the very lovely Candice. We are in the village of Godstone. This walk has proved to be a bit of a thorn in the side. We've actually planned to do this walk about four or five times. We actually came here the first time and it absolutely chucked it down, yeah, and we sort of had to abandon it. I think we just got some food in the calf and sat in the car. So, morning. So, it wasn't ideal really. Um, but we're back now. It is sort of raining. It's on and off rain. And we just thought, let's just grow a pair. Big girl pants on. And let's just do it. <laughs> so, the walk is 3.75 miles long. <laughs> yeah, they've had a lot of flooding as well here. So, the water down there is quite high. We've got a cider to review for later on. One that James and Mary from Bad Hair Adventures gave me for Christmas. Cheers guys. So we'll review that. Candy says thank you. I made the sandwiches today. Chicken and ham. Anyways, I am digressing. We're heading off up to the church. There's some really cool arms houses up there. Because we saw that when we sort of came here before. And we got about that far and turned back, so enough talking, let's get walking. The Bay Pond is a peaceful haven for wildlife, but appearances can be deceptive, and these placid waters betray a warlike past. In Elizabethan times, gunpowder production had grown to be such an important local industry that one of the biggest mills employed about a thousand workers. George Evelyn, father of the diarist John Evelyn, manufactured most of the gunpowder for the Crown's armed forces and the pond was built in 1611 to provide his business with water power. Both churches on this route were restored by Sir George Gilbert Scott, one of the leading architects of the Victorian era. He headed the largest architectural practice of the time and was associated with work on almost 500 churches. Students of the great man need hardly come to Godstone when they can see many of his largest and most famous buildings in London and other great cities. But, as we'll see, Godstone has one or two tricks up its sleeve. Sir George lived at Rook's Nest, now derelict and awaiting planning permission, less than a mile from the centre of the village, now on the site of a golf course. Apart from his work on the local churches, he also designed one of Godstone's most charming buildings. We'll pass the low, mock Tudor St Mary's Homes, right next to St Nicholas's Church. The almshouses were founded in 1872 by a young widow, Mrs. Augusta Nona Hunt, for a aged or infirm persons of good character. With their profusion of little gabled windows, Sir George's designs seem almost to have grown out of the colourful, well-tended gardens that separate the homes from Church Lane. A tiny chapel, heated by a fireplace, in the west wall completes this delightful group. Do look in and see it, it's open to visitors daily. Probably not at the moment. The homes became a housing association in 1982 and are now a registered charity.
it's about quarter to two and we've arrived in the little village of Tandridge I believe it's pronounced it's been really really muddy on this walk there's been a lot of rain in the southeast and the south of England it's either flooded or it's just really boggy and muddy so we're going to head up to the church parish church at Tandridge up there and probably stop there have a bite eat our lunch yeah I'm starving I'm dying for a sandwich and crack a cider open bag of crisps lovely jubbly at about the time that he was building St Mary's homes Sir George was also involved in restoring St Nicholas's church and the church of St Peter's in Tandridge by now some of his most famous projects the Albert Memorial the Home Office and St Pancras Station in London were already behind him he had worked on many of the great cathedrals too but some people thought that his unusually thorough restorations destroyed too much of the original medieval work a letter that Scott wrote from Rook's Nest in 1871 suggests a different story in it he told fellow architect George Edmund Street how he was under pressure from an Oxfordshire rector to tear out the old pews from his church. Scott believed that the seating should stay. I value it no less for being humble, he wrote. It is good old work and in its place and I hold that it is wrong to renew it. I wish especially that it shall not be renewed against my will or after I am away. We found a place to sit just outside the church right next to this massive ancient yew tree it's as Candice said it's probably been here longer than well before the church was built Candice is cracking out the sandwiches that I made this morning it's a chicken sandwich I believe what's it like good yeah that's it that means good I'm guessing and we've got some ham sandwiches as well we've got this uh, Rattler, pineapple cider, Healy cider, and it's Cornish from Carnwall. And uh, that was very kindly given to me by James and Mary from Bad Hair Adventures. Cheers, James and Mary, for that. We're going to be trying that out. Looking forward to that. Oh, I'll crack it open now. Trying to crack it open now, yeah? yeah. 4%. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, crack that open now. All right, Oliver Reed. <laughs> you going to say that? <laughs> you better line your stomach with a sandwich first, didn't you? Anyway. <laughs> See what I mean? It's what I have to deal with. Oh. It's fine. It's fine. Candy doesn't drink very often because, of course, she can't because she's, like, borderline diabetic. So um, when she does, she loves a cider. Mm. Anyway, it's 4%. It says, time to get tropical, bursting with refreshing pineapple, blended with crisp apples and Healy's know-how. Our Rattler Cornish cider with pineapple has the fresh tropical flavour you crave. Chill it, sip it, love it. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that funny? Look, it says, chill it, sip it, love it. Yeah, look. I don't know why Candice finds it so funny. I've got me over trousers here. I think it looks like it's going to piss down. If that does happen, the church porch is open, but it means we have to sit on the floor. But we've got our comfy mat, so it's all right. Um, oh, yeah. And I've also got... found this in the loft last night. We was clearing stuff out. I found a really good Life Venture Cordura fabric... 10 litre dry bag in a nice green colour and uh, what did I find in here hang on a minute I found loads of Highlander solid fuel tablets hexi blocks like literally loads what about five boxes of them so I've got about 40 tablets now um, and I thought do you know what I've not used a hexi stove for a while any old excuse I'm gonna boil up some water on on a little stove here and have like a hot chocolate or a soup, whatever. Got the Esbit triangle stove. Right, let's crack that out. Candice wants the cider. Oh, that's got a faint 
pineapple smell. There's something else going on with that though. Do you want to try a bit? Here we go. <laughs> Well, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nice. Is it? Yeah, you can what? taste the pineapple. Yeah? What else do you like about it? <laughs> do you know what you've had there? You just like it's it. it yeah. It's just, yeah, okay, that's fine. I always feel like I talk too much about these ciders, so I will try and get just like, input I'll... from Candice or whoever else I'm with. But... Oh, Oi, I haven't even had a sip yet, Oliver Reed. Where's your mate, Keith Moon? <laughs> Keith Moon. Right, oh, I'm getting dripped on up here. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Hang you on. can move oh. one. Nah, it's fine. Cheers, everyone. Oh, oh, that's nice. That's a bit special. <laughs> I'm keeping that from you. Oh, that's so easy to drink. Yeah. Definitely getting a pineapple. I'm getting the apple coming through as well. It, it doesn't taste alcoholic at all. It's no. so that's easy to drink, isn't it? I could just like fruit juice. Wake up in the morning, have a glass of that with your your porridge, you know. Tastes like pineapple. Aid. Yeah, mm. yeah, I guess. Yeah, are, are you not getting the apple and the like the apple no. cider? No, I'm a little bit, little bit. I'm getting that. This is a good one. This I've had the original Rattler before. I think the first time I had that might have been at, on the White Cliffs of Dover with Will. Um, and apparently I think there's a strawberry one, strawberry and lime. I know Suffolk Dan has tried one. Um, yeah, I want to look for more of the Rattler ciders. But this so far is my favourite Rattler. This is good. What would you give it out of 10? 8.7. 8.7. Yeah, one more sip and I'm close to making a verdict. I'm going to give it an 8.9 it could get a 9 to be honest it's bloody good that that's a good cider I'd, I'd order more of these I'd definitely order more if I could find someone that sells them I'd buy them definitely liking that very good Cheers, James and Mary. You've you've chosen well there. Of course, Mary's got the completely opposite taste in cider to me. She likes dry, vintage, original sort of taste in ciders. You know, she says you want a cider to taste like a cider, and I do agree with that to to some amount, some degree. But uh, I like fruit ciders. I like lower percentage ciders. Don't mind flat or fizzy. Cloudy's quite good, but I like something that's a bit you know a bit different different flavors mixed in things like that i kind of think you know a plain cider it tastes just that really there's not a lot of difference with them i like something like variety basically but yeah that's good and that cheers Godstone Farm is a popular children's farm with lots of friendly animals, sand pits, den building and adventure play areas. There's also an all weather play barn, a useful backup if you're running short on inducements to finish the walk. The farm is on Tilburstow Hill, just to the south of Godstone Village and also has a tea room. Probably not open right now though.
We are back at the start. There's the uh, oh, the village pond, the village green. The calf was shut, unfortunately. It's a good little calf. We went in there like they were doing takeaways, and uh, it's really nice. In the, in, the, uh, in the summer? Yeah, so uh, I, got some, I got some really good news. The very lovely Candice has kindly bought me some more guidebooks. You know those year-round walks books? So she's got me the Surrey one, the East Sussex one, and the West Sussex one. So, bless her. Thank you very much. There's actually a, a summer walk in the Surrey one that's in Godston. So we're going to come back here yeah. naturally because we've got to do all the walks in the book, haven't we? So yeah, here's the uh, the car, you can just about see it. And then there you can just see the pond, and the light glistening off the pond. So we are going to leave the video here. It's been a good little walk, very muddy. The weather was mm, kind to us. Yeah, that was yeah. a good walk. It's good, muddy. Just, muddy, very muddy, yeah. yeah muddy. We enjoyed it. In general, yeah, I like the almshouses, the churches was good. That ford was really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, just the water, really, the water and the history. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same thing with me as always, yeah. And the cider was very good as well. Cheers, James and yeah. Mary. Cheers for watching, everyone. Take care of yourselves, look after each other, and stay safe. And uh, have a jolly safe one. All right, I will see you soon. Bye. Bye. Hawaii 5 -0. Bye. Apart from that, it's a really nice place to live <laughs> here, trust me. Yeah. Trust me.